Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on how to get a light sensor reading into Django. Uh, if you've been following along at this point, we should have a Raspberry Pi running Django and a lightsensor.py script to read from a light sensor. So we'll just go ahead and SSH into our Pi here. Basically what we're going to do is make a cron job that reads from that light sensor every one minute and stores it in a Django database. So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, so if you recall, here's our lightsensor.py script, and we're going to have to modify this a little bit, um, but we'll do that here in a minute. So first, let's go into our project directory, and we're going to do python manage.py start app, and we'll call this app sensors. Okay, so now let's go into the sensors app, and we'll look at our models get these all set up to be able to store this light sensor reading. So we'll start out by creating a class called light sensor reading and this is going to extend models.model and the first thing we're going to have is a reading and so if you recall from the output last time this is going to be that number string that will compare to all the other readings to see if it gets brighter or darker. Uh, so we'll make this a models.char field and we'll do a max length of 20. That should be enough to hold uh, what our reading is. And then we want to store the date time. So we'll do models.date time field. And we'll do auto now add equals true. So we don't actually have to get the time. Uh, it'll just happen when this object gets created. We'll def the Unicode self for our model here. And we'll return self.reading. And then we'll make another class, and this will be called light sensor. So we want this to be scalable. Uh, so we'll be able to have multiple sensors uh, doing multiple different readings at the same time. So we'll give this sensor a name, models.char field, and we'll give it a max length of 200. And then we'll give it a slug because we want to be able to print this stuff out on the front end. Uh, so we need some way to define it in the URL, so we'll say models.slug field, and we want that to be unique equals true. We want two light sensors with the same slug. So then in here we'll do the GPIO pin, that's going to be models.positive integer field, and we'll set the default to zero since there isn't a pin zero, that way if we don't set anything it won't freak out. Um, and then the last things we need for the light sensor itself is a many to many back to light sensor reading. Um, and we'll set that to null equals true and blank equals true so we can create a sensor before there's any readings. Uh, then again, we need to def the Unicode self and we'll return self.name. So now we've got our models all set up uh, to be able to define a light sensor and take readings from it and relate the two. Okay, so now we need to be able to uh, execute that light sensor script um, as an executable from the command line and have it just return the light sensor value. So if we go back up into our home directory, we've got this light sensor.py here. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to have to make this executable, so we're going to say slash user bin python, so that it uses roots built in python, uh, not the python that's provided by virtual env. And then down here, um, instead of just launching this script into a never-ending loop, what we'll do is print rc time, uh, and we'll do a typecast to an integer here. And we'll do sys.argv, uh, and we'll take the argument at position 1. So sys.argv uh, position 0 is the command that you execute, so it would be slash home slash pi slash light sensor dot pi, and then position 1 is any argument that you give it on the command line after that. So now we should be able to execute this as root and get a reading back. Uh, as long as we pass it the pin that the light sensor is on. So if we say sudo dot slash light sensor dot pi and we tell it pin 22, ah, we need to import sys. 
So up here we'll just import sys. Alright, let's try that again. And there you go, you can see 30,012 is our light reading. So now this script is executable and we can call it from a view inside of Django. Okay, so now we have to set up that function inside of Django that's going to actually call that script. So we'll go back into our microfarm uh, site here and we'll go back into sensors and here we'll make a services.py and this will actually hold the interface between Django and executing that script. So we'll start with import sub process uh, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. And we'll do from sensors.models import light sensor reading and light sensor. Uh, and then down here we'll define a function called read light sensors. Okay, so now we'll iterate through all the light sensors so we can have multiple sensors. So we'll say for sensor in light sensor dot objects dot all. And then we'll say reading equals sub process dot check output. So sub process uh, spawns a new process that's provided by Python um, to execute a command outside of what's currently executing. So this will run as our Py user, um, but it'll be a new process outside of the gunicorn process that's handling the request from Django. Um, so that'll allow us to run sudo, um, and the command that we'll run right after that is slash home slash pi slash light sensor dot pi. And uh, just like we did in the terminal now, we have to give it the argument of which GPIO pin. So we're going to convert that with typecast to a string, and it's going to be sensor.gpio pin, which is going to come from our database, um, and that's that'll iterate through all of our light sensors. So we can have multiple sensors on multiple different pins, and we just call this function one time, and it'll take a reading from all of our sensors and dump them into the database. Um, so that will return our reading and set it to a variable called reading. Then we need to do new reading equals light sensor reading so we'll instantiate a new object we'll say reading equals reading and we'll do new reading dot save uh, which that auto now add will automatically fill in the time there for us then we'll do sensor dot readings dot add because uh, we want to add this new reading to our list of our many to many coming off sensor so say new reading and then we'll say sensor dot save um, and that's it for now. So we'll return true. All right, so that's our service that's going to actually read the light sensor and store it in the database. Okay, so now we need a way to call that service, um, and we're going to use a cron job for that. So to keep this all neat and clean, we'll go back up into our project root here, and we'll do python manage.py start app and we'll call this one cron handler and this will really make it scalable so we can have our cron jobs call multiple things from inside of Django instead of just that one uh, function but we could technically go put a URL on that function and have our cron job call that directly um, but it's not as scalable so now let's look at our cron handler app okay so we want to go into our views now and from here, um, so we're not going to need render, but we will need django.http import http response. And we'll say from sensors.services import read light sensors. Okay, so now we'll def one minute cron and this will take a request and we'll say read light sensors and then we'll say return HTTP response and we'll just give it a blank response and the reason that we do that is so that we can curl a URL that's uh, hooked up to this view um, but that expects an HTTP resp response back so if we return something like true you're going to get some kind of error on the back end which just isn't clean so we want to make sure that we return what uh, our calling function is expecting. 
Um, so we can put other things in here now. So if we had other sensors, uh, we could have a one minute cron that's going to execute a bunch of different services. Uh, but for now we only have the one, so we'll just roll with that. So now we need to hook this one minute cron view up to a URL. So we'll go back into microfarm and we'll go into our nested microfarm directory here and we'll go into our urls.py alright so here we will define a new url and this one is going to be one minute cron and we'll have that call cronhandler.views.one minute cron all right, so now our URLs are all set up. Okay, so now we want to uh, register our light sensors with the admin so we can take a look at them before we start dumping into them and make sure they're working right. So we'll go back into our sensors app here and we'll vim our admin. And we're going to say from sensors.models import light sensor and light sensor reading. And so we'll do admin.site.register light sensor and admin.site.register light sensor reading alright so now that we've got that all done um, we need to restart our gunicorn server so do sudo supervisor ctl restart gunicorn to push all these changes from django live Stopped and started. Okay, so now we should be able to go to 192.168.1.25, which is what our Pi is running at. And if we go to slash admin, we should be able to log in. Okay, so we have to add our sensors as an installed app. First, so we'll go into micro farm and we'll vim our settings. And down here in installed apps, we're going to add sensors. Alright, we'll restart G Unicorn one more time. Actually, so now what we need to do is go into our project root and we need to do python manage.py uh, syncdb, which should actually throw an error. because Django 1.7 now includes uh, South, which is awesome. So now we don't have to ever, we can change our models and not have to deal with PHP my admin to make those changes manually. So what we do is Python manage.py make migrations and this will invoke South and figure out all of the changes to the database, uh, which is the addition of our new models there. And then we can now run python manage.py syncdb and self will take care of those database migrations for us. All right, so now let's uh, restart G Unicorn one more time. Now, if we go back over to our admin and refresh, we should see our light sensors pop up in here. So there we go. So now we need to add a new light sensor. Um, and I'm going to call this living, living room uh, window bottom because I'm going to put a light sensor on the bottom of my living room window and one on the top. So living room window bottom. And the GPIO pin for that one is 22. So we'll save this. Now we have a light sensor to find. So if we go back here into sensors and we look at our light sensor readings, this is empty. Um, so now, let's see, so let me demonstrate. If we go to 192.168.1.25 slash one minute cron and execute that just manually. So you'll see it just returned a blank HTTP response 
But if we refresh this now, we should have one light sensor reading, and there's our reading. Okay, so now we need to set up a cron job to call this URL every one minute. So back over here in our terminal, we'll do sudo vim slash etsy slash cron tab. And down here at the bottom of the file, we'll make a new one. And we'll do five stars. And that's to run something every minute. Uh, and then our user will be pi, and the command that we're going to use is curl minus s. So minus s is for silent, don't show any output. And we'll have it call http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 on port 8000 slash one minute cron. So basically, what this will do now is every minute it'll curl this URL. Uh, and all it does is just executes that script that dumps our sensor reading into the database. So let's write that. And now, uh, just to make sure that everything worked out well, we're going to reboot. And we'll be back in a minute to check out. Uh, as soon as this pie comes back up, it should start dumping in values. So we'll wait about 10 minutes and SSH back into it, and we should see a bunch of readings in there. All right, so now it's 12:51. Uh, I haven't SSH back into the Pi yet, but it rebooted itself and came up and running. So here's the one sensor reading we had from earlier. If we just refresh this page now, you can see that there's 12 readings now. So that's pretty cool because now the Pi is self-sufficient. So if there's a power outage or something like that, when it comes back online, it's automatically going to start dumping these sensor readings every one minute. So stay tuned, coming up next we'll look at how to build a template out that's going to graph all this out for us so we can look at um, when I put this in the window, my window faces west, so I'll be able to see the time of day that the sun kind of crests over the roof and hits the bottom of the window, and by putting a second light sensor in the top, I'll be able to see when the sun goes down over the horizon and leaves the window, and then we can use that to do things like trigger uh, a stepper motor to open and close our window. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.